Hello, welcome back to Dr. John Pellegrino's laboratory. My name is Paul Canny and right now I will be giving you an instructional video on how to make an imprint stamp using our nano imprint lithography machine. So, the first thing that you're going to want to do is turn the machine on. Um, the control box has a couple main wires. The first one is this white wire here, um, which is the USB cable, which you're going to make sure you want to have plugged into your computer. Secondly, there are two power cables. One of them is a thicker um, machine power cable, and then the other one powers up the National Instrument DAC card. Um, so you make sure that both of those are plugged into a power strip um, in case of power surges as well. And then you want to make sure that you also have your power strip on. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that all of your emergency stops are depressed, and you're going to want to turn your machine on. You can do this by pushing the green button, you should hear a slight hum as the fans come on and then you should also see the panel multimeter charge up to about 118 volts. This is how you know that your machine is on. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is load up your National Instruments LabVIEW program. So you come over to your computer here. All of the LabVIEW programs are down here in the bottom right hand corner under LabVIEW controls. So you open that guy up. Um, right now we're just going to do a manual control one-off experiment. So I'll come here to the overall manual control and open that guy up. I actually already have it open down here. Um, and that'll pull up a, a screen similar to this. Uh, what you're going to want to do next is click the go button and then turn on the 24 volt DC logic. This will allow all your components to work. Um, and the first thing that I like to do is just give it a quick test um, and check this film pressure. And you should hear a click. Uh, a distinguishable click as that two-way cylinder or two-way valve opens and then closes. Um, so make sure that your 24 volt DC is on but everything else is deselected um, and then we're going to start to turn on some of our pressures. Um, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to open up your valve by turning it all the way to the left. Um, you're going to close this, excuse me, you're going to close this valve by turning it all the way to the right and then you're going to set your stamping pressure. This is accomplished here where you can see you can either increase by turning to the right or you can decrease by turning to the left. Um, and so you want to look at this left gauge here um, and then set it to the pressure that you want. Uh, usually we stamp between 60 to 300 psi. Um, additionally this gauge is important because it will let you know when your nitrogen is starting to fall. Um, once you get below about 500 psi, that's this red marker here, um, you probably want to change your tank out because you might not have enough nitrogen to run the full experiment. So now that the nitrogen is on and we have the pressure that we set, we're going to come over here to the other side of the lab and we're going to turn on our house air. Um, this is done by turning this valve um, from the closed position like that. You're going to turn it all the way to the left so that it's facing towards you and that's in the open position. Um, once you have your valves opened, what you're going to do is you're going to come back over here to the control screen and you're going to turn your heater on. Um, this is this button right here, your watt low heater. And as you can tell from the temperature reading here, um, it, we're at 24, 25 degrees Celsius. So your watt low heater should start heating up your machine. Um, and this will take a little bit of time, but you want to reach whatever your imprint uh, temperature is before you actually begin imprinting. So we're just going to leave that on for a little bit and come over here to do our next setup. So what you're going to want to do is take a Kapton sheet, that's this orange sheet right here, um, and you're going to want to put it between your clamps. Um, I, I would do it right now but I only have one hand so what you do is you lift up and you insert it in between these clamps like that. Take your flathead screwdriver and you're going to tighten down all of these um, screws until your Kapton is tight. Uh, then you want to make sure that you have a good Kapton film up in here. If you don't have a good Kapton film, um, we have extras in this bag. These are the non-stick Kapton films and then these ones with the yellow on the back are the sticky adhesive Kapton films. Um, when you're doing this, the adhesive is on the yellow side uh, so just be aware of that and when you're ready to apply the adhesive, peel the yellow film backing off and stick your silicon stamp to the adhesive. Um, but we already have a good one on there 
Uh, the next thing I like to do is set up my baggie. Um, so what I do is I put the testing. So we're going to do a pressure testing number three. It's good to have some sort of indicator of what you're trying to measure here. And then you need to have values for time, pressure, temperature, cooling temperature, and the material that you're stamping into. So be sure to fill all these out. Um, the two materials that we've been stamping into are this white material. This is the polysulfone material, um, which stamps a little bit lower temperature. And then this yellow looking material is the Ultim, uh, and this stamps around 250 degrees Celsius. If you need more of these two materials, you come over to here. Um, this brown right here is filled with Ultim. Excuse me, there it is. Uh, this guy has a bunch of Ultim in it uh, that you can use for your samples and for stamping. And then down here in this white bag, um, this is where all your polysulfone will be. And so if you need uh, more samples in order to do experiments with, you take your scissors and cut yourself a piece of one of those two materials. Um, so then coming back over here, um, we'll just assume that our heating tower has heated up to our specified temperature. What you're want, gonna wanna do next is come over here, and what you'll do is first step, you will push cylinder valve, which will lower your cylinder, and what you want to do is there's a slight hissing coming out of here. You want to wait until the hissing has ceased. Um, this means that your cylinder has filled up all the way with compressed air and that you're applying the full amount of contact force. If you try and start your experiment before this hissing stops, you could experience a blowout failure within your caps on film. So coming back over here, um, our cylinder valve is down. What you're then going to want to do is select your film pressure. And what that does is it's going to fill up your Kapton um, pressure vessel with whatever pressure you set it at, at the nitrogen tank. Um, so then you're going to wait your extended duration of time, however long you specified that your experiment was going to run for. Um, let's say ours is going to be two seconds for the time being. You're going to want to come back over here. The first thing that you do is select film pressure and you should hear a hissing sound as all of the nitrogen bleeds out of your pressure vessel. Once that hissing has ceased, you're going to come up here and select cylinder valve, which will raise up your cylinder. Um, in order to close out your experiment, it's important to fully bleed all of your lines. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to take your sample out, whatever materials or things that you stamped on, you're going to want to remove those completely. And then you're going to come back over here and select cylinder valve, which is going to drive your cylinder back down. Then you're going to come over here to your nitrogen tank. You're going to fully close the nitrogen tank by turning this to the right. You're going to want to open this guy by fully turning it to the left. Um, and then this guy, you're going to want to decrease. So you decrease until um, this is very loose and there's no frictional resistance as you turn it. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is come back here and you're going to toggle your film pressure until you don't hear any more bleeding um, nitrogen so all the hissing has stopped um, and I like to do it about five times is usually pretty good. Uh, the next thing that you're going to want to do is go back over to the wall and we're going to shut off our air supply. So you do that by taking this, turning it about 90 degrees counterclockwise, um, and that turns off your house air supply. You're going to come back over to your lab view controller, and you're going to do a very similar thing that you did with the nitrogen, of just toggling, toggling your cylinder valve here until the hissing stops. And the way I like to do it is there's a certain point where when you turn the cylinder on, it won't fully come down, it'll come down about halfway, and then it'll go back up. And that's when you know that you've bled the full amount of air out of your cylinder. Um, so that's it for the closing. Uh, just make sure you don't burn yourself on the heating head. Make sure you don't um, do this in the wrong order. It's very important to select cylinder valve first, then film pressure. Then when your experiment is done, select film pressure, and then cylinder valve. Um, good luck and have fun experimenting.